Everyone has to start somewhere when it comes to anime. Most people start off with shows that they saw air on TV, like Pokemon or Naruto, not knowing that they are not just cartoons, until they figure out there are way more shows like this out there over on the internet, after which they'll probably start out with some classics like Attack on Titan or Started Online. I too started watching just Pokemon, until I somehow found out about this show called Osamatsu-san. What is Osamatsu-san? Well, if you lived in Japan, you probably would've known. But we in the West were enjoying One Punch Man during 2015, Japan was crazy about these boys in blue. It was in fact the most successful anime franchise in 2016, according to Japanese fans. The show is a reboot of the 80s series Osamatsu-kun, which was a show about this overbite guy, Yami, well, the show wasn't even named after him, instead being named after the sex pledge brothers Osomatsu. 2015 anime puts the Matsuno brothers in the forefront, after being off the air for so long, haven't gotten a job, aren't studying, and don't have a girlfriend. Basically, they are giant needs. You might think, these guys have six same faces, how am I going to tell them apart? The answer is that their first personalities and their looks, no matter how strange it sounds. For example, Yushimatsu always has his mouth open, Chorumatsu typically has a shy triangle mouth, and Toromatsu has big kawaii eyes. The boys are also color coded, so if you figure out one of the guys' personality, and you connect that personality to the color, you're basically set. Personally, I found it very satisfying and rewarding, but throughout watching the show, I was able to more easily tell each of the boys apart from each other. Each of the brothers has a unique personality. The oldest brother, Osamatsu, acts like a generic shonen protagonist. He's not that smart, a bit of a perf, and yet, as the oldest brother, he looks out for his brothers, even if it doesn't always work out. Karamatsu, my personal favorite, is a giant tryhard who thinks he looks cool, but sadly, all the girls think he is a creep, and his brothers always call him out for his questionable fashion sense. Also, he constantly talks English, thinking it makes him look cool. Buraza, buraza, buraza. So painful. Choromatsu is the most responsible of the brothers. Still looking for jobs from time to time, but sadly, he too is a failure in that he is a huge idol otaku. Most of the time he's used as a straight man for jokes, but he can be just as oblivious as his brothers. Then we have Ichimatsu, the emo boy of the family who thinks of everyone including himself as trash. Also, he loves cats. He's a cat boy. He's another fan favorite character for obvious reasons. Contrasting with this depressing guy, there's Juicy Matsu, a hyperactive guy who's extremely lovable and a big fan of baseball. He's extremely lovable, but his episodes can be emotional times too. Sometimes. By the way, Juicy Matsu is actually voiced by the same voice actor who does Jotaro Kujo. <laughs> Figure that. Actually all of the brothers are voiced by popular anime voice actors, so don't be surprised if you think you've heard any of their voices elsewhere. I think that's actually a big part of why the show got so popular in the first place. All the popular voice actors are in the show. Finally, we got the youngest brother, Todomatsu, who acts cute, but is in fact the most dangerous out of all of them. Acting like he doesn't even know his own brothers when he's trying to get popular with girls. So cold. FYI, he's also totally effeminate. Throughout the show we see how each of the brothers interact with each other, and how they interact with other recurring characters. And most relationships in the show are explored to great effect. The show has two types of episodes. The first type revolves around the daily lives of the brothers, filled with boredom. The second type of episode are parody episodes, in which the brothers, with their unique personalities, replace the characters and whatever they are doing a parody of that episode. Each episode of the show is often split up into multiple shorter skits of around 5 to 8 minutes long, so you won't be bored for an entire episode if one skit doesn't really suit your taste. But when an episode consists of just one long 25 minute skit, you know it is gonna be a good one. Some of my favorite skits include a detective show parody in which the comic detective Osomatsu acts like a huge dumbass so that the typical tense murder mystery atmosphere dies down to the point that the killer himself comes out to join in on the fun. There's also an episode in which the Matsuno parents are divorcing and thus the Neat brothers have to do interviews with their mom so she can decide who will stay with her and who will be left on the wayside. 
with each of the brothers having ridiculous reasons and tricks to convince their mom to stay with them. And finally, an episode in which previous protagonist Yami decides he wants to be the main character of the show again. So he organizes a race to decide which character will become the protagonist for the rest of the show, with every character in the show participating. They got the director of Gintama to direct the show, which means the comedic timings always great and the running gags constantly evolve throughout the show. The types of humor you usually see in the show are parodies, self-loathing comedy and self-aware comedy. In conclusion, if you like comedy anime, great relationships between characters and experimental animation, you should definitely try the show. It is about 50 episodes right now, split over two seasons, plus a movie and a few OVAs, I think they're like two OVAs. Time will tell if Osamatsu san will ever return to TV, but it seems like the only reason we got a season 2 in the first place is because of the massive unexpected popularity of the show in Japan. The show has a lot of female fans, and the show is aware of it at a certain point. The first episode has been banned from Japanese TV and worldwide streaming services, so if you want to start the show, you should look on other websites than Crunchyroll or any other legal streaming services. But if you do want to watch any app just to start the start of the show, I think you should watch the first app because it's full of anime references. And if you aren't convinced by then, I suggest starting off with episode 5, which is a great introduction to two of the most popular characters in the show. So if you don't like either of those episodes, maybe the show isn't for you, but otherwise, I think you should stick with it. That is about all I have to say on Osamatsu-san. It's one of my favorite shows personally. Probably my favorite comedy anime show. If you have any questions about Osamatsu-san, feel free to ask me in the comments down below. That's about all I have to say, so bye bye.